Good morning, thanks for coming. My name is Sam Robinson, I'm from Holochip Corporation and going to be talking a little bit today about a uh, variable collimation display system. The idea is to bring accurate accommodation and vergence depth cues to uh, immersive flight simulators which typically don't have those type of cues for a full range of flight scenarios. Uh, this project is funded by Navy under the SBIR program. So first of all, why do we care about flight simulators? They provide a low cost, low risk way of training pilots in a wide range of flight scenarios. Um, a typical flight simulator looks like something you see in the image up here. Uh, this is a full motion flight simulator. The black bars you see at the bottom are a hexapod for controlling motion, and the white portion is a shell that uh, encapsulates a full cockpit and produces a uh, immersive uh, visual system. Uh, if you look inside, the optics that provide that system uh, contain a rear projection screen, which is illuminated by uh, several projectors to create high enough resolution, a large curved mirror. Uh, the back projection screen is placed to the focal length of that mirror, meaning that you have a uh, virtual image created at a near infinite focal length. Uh, and then there are also some chin window displays for the, uh, the other windows on uh, different types of aircraft. The importance of this type of display is that all of the rays from the, the virtual image are coming parallel to the pilot. Uh, so if you look from the pilot's perspective, that means that both the pilot and the co-pilot are seeing the exact same image. There aren't any parallax mismatches between the two seats, so when they go through any flight regime, they're seeing the same things. Uh, also, this provides accurate vergence and accommodation cues for infinitely far objects, meaning that uh, the way you normally perceive depth is correct for anything that is very far away, whether that's a distant airfield or the ground. And because those views are correct, the, there's little or no eye strain for the pilots flying this craft for a long period of time. Uh, inside of a, uh, a helicopter, you have a slightly different uh, set up. You have the large front display, but then you also have what are called chin windows. These are windows that are down by the pilot's feet and lets them see the ground when uh, they're, they're performing maneuvers close to the ground. Uh, this is important in vertical and takeoff landing situations as well as any sort of operation where you are traveling close to the ground and or there is poor weather and you are literally relying on seeing the ground to uh, produce your correct uh, flight patterns. Uh, because the uh, current simulator designs use these fixed collimation displays, uh, the, the virtual image is at a single location and it's usually about 60 feet away from the pilot. That 60 feet is chosen because uh, in the world of simulators that is effectively an infinite distance. Well, whenever you have a situation where you are closer to the ground or closer to an object than that 60 feet, you end up with mismatch uh, visual cues and it provides absolutely incorrect visual cues. Uh, and so these, these displays just don't work. We were, when we started this program, we were invited to a simulator in uh, San Diego and one of their uh, uh, top flight trainers took us on a ride in a simulator, flew us around, it was really cool, and we came in for a landing, we crashed, and she just kind of shrugged and said, yeah, you can't tell where the ground is. So that's, that's not very useful in a, uh, in a flight trainer where you want to train something other than being a long way from the ground. Uh, so our solution to that is a variable collimation display. We are still generating a virtual image, the same as the current systems, but we are able to vary the location of that image with respect to the pilot uh, as the aircraft changes in altitude. Uh, the image moves from about 10 feet to 60 feet away from the pilot, 10 feet being the closest you are ever to the ground when the, when the aircraft is landed. Uh, and this gives accurate uh, vergence and accommodation cues during all flight regimes and most particularly when you are close to the ground and you can tell where it is and your, uh, your eyes function normally. The value of this is that flight, flying flight simulators is far less expensive than flying traditional aircraft uh, to the tune of about 10% of the cost for, per hour of operation. 
And that means that if whenever you can increase the different situations in which you can operate a flight simulator as opposed to an actual aircraft, so we're talking about now landing or low altitude flight, it drastically decreases cost and, else, and also risk in those situations. Uh, further, this technology that we're developing to provide these depth cues can eventually be applied to the out the window display and instead of just the chin windows, providing these uh, accurate depth cues over a wide range of operating environments in a very realistic simulator. So the way this thing works is we have a, uh, instead of having a standard rear projection screen that is imaged by the, the mirror, we replace that, that rear projection screen with a custom optical module that allows us to vary the apparent location of this uh, virtual image and the user's eyes will naturally follow, follow this, this image and converge and accommodate on it appropriately so that they can judge distance as they normally would and it doesn't induce any eye strain. The system as shown here is uh, basically a, a replica of the way that current uh, WAC windows or wide area collimation windows work for chin window systems where you have the, the, uh, the mirror and the, sim and the projector directly below where the pilot would sit and you are projecting up into their view path. Uh, this system is very much inspired by work of uh, Verifocal systems. Some very good work has been done with these systems. Uh, Lou and Love have both shown systems that use an adaptive lens and create a virtual image, the location of which can be varied. However, they are using very small adaptive lenses since that's what's available on the market. And this means that for the, uh, the exit pupil of the system to be matched with the pupil of a human eye, it has to be very close to the person's face. That means that it is uh, appropriate for a head-mounted display, but isn't going to work for a simulator display where by necessity the, the device that's creating the image has to be far removed from the location of the pilot. So to make that happen, what you need is a, lar a far larger adaptive lens, and that's what we've developed. So these systems are using three or four millimeter adaptive lenses. We've developed a 140 millimeter adaptive lens that allows us to increase the size of the exit pupil from about uh, three or four millimeters to, the, uh, to several times the interocular distance of the standard pilot, allowing them to move their head around comfortably within the exit pupil of the system and maintain accurate visual cues. Uh, so that we're, we're talking about a lens here that's about 40 times or 50 times the size of the lenses that have been used in previous verifocal systems. So the implementation, as I said earlier, is very simple, similar to existing WAC windows uh, or rear projection windows for chin window displays. There is a, in traditional systems, there is a projector that bounces light off a mirror, a flat mirror laying on the ground, and then projects onto a rear projection screen. We are basically removing that system, replacing the flat mirror with a curved mirror, replacing the uh, rear projection screen with a beam splitter, and putting a custom optical module in front of the projector. And that means that we can drop this system pretty much into place where a existing system was and, and provide these better depth cues. As you can see on the image on the right, the, uh, the blue lines are showing the, uh, the light rays that are delivered to the location of the pilot. And as you can see, that's very far removed from the system itself, which is why we need such a large lens. So Holochip is uniquely positioned to develop the system. We've been developing adaptive lenses for several years and throughout that time have been uh, increasing both the quality and the size of these lenses. And that work has really culminated into the development of this very large lens that has very favorable, uh, favorable and low aberration. So this is part of a phase two Navy SBIR. The first phase was a paper study and we determined that a large enough adaptive lens could solve this problem. We are now in the first year of a three, three year phase two program. We have developed the adaptive lens. We are procuring and, and assembling the rest of the optics module and all of the fixed lenses. Uh, next year we will be putting together a full prototype demo in a lab and the year after that we hope to take it on the road, bring it to this conference, demo it as well as put it into existing flight simulators at multiple locations around the country, uh, drop it in and let pilots get real experience with it and see how they feel about a uh, simulator with these type of uh, depth cues added. So with that I'd like to take questions and uh, bring Rob Batchko up on stage to, uh, to help me ask, answer any questions that you guys have. He's been doing some of the optical design in this so if you have questions about that he's 
uh, better to answer that. And uh, please let us know if you have questions.